1 Samuel and chapter number 15. Samuel and chapter number 15. We're just going to read one verse, uh, verse number 22. Verse number 22. The Bible says, And Samuel said, and I'll just for context, to Saul, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to take over our time together, Lord. I, Lord, I want to lift up uh, this uh, service to you. Lord, want it to be honoring and glorifying to you, Lord. And, I uh, just ask you to speak to us through your word tonight. I ask you to have your way with us. I, I pray that this message will be very clear tonight. Lord, please empty me of self. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, please just take over in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Definitely. It's... Uh, <clears throat> It's a very interesting verse. It's one of those verses that, uh, you know, it's in the middle of a, of, a, of a bigger story that's going on, and all of a sudden it's like Samuel kind of steps off to the side and says, hold on, let me give you this nugget of truth that you're overlooking. It's, uh, it's just a, a neat little Samuel's commentary if you will, on the will of the Lord. Notice the second half of this verse where it says, Behold. That's where it begins. Samuel says, Behold. Notice this. Uh, and he says, Saul, hold on, pause for a second and pay attention to this little truth. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Uh, to hearken, the word hearken, I've, I've said this so many times, it means to hear and do. It, it, it's, it goes well with the book of James, where James said, you know, a fool hears and doesn't do. Uh, the wise man does. It goes well with Matthew chapter 7, where Jesus said that. Uh, the fool's going to hear my words and not do them, and the wise man's going to hear my words and do them. And so, that comparison there, that's what the word hearken means. It means to hear and do. It means when, when you hear instruction, okay, I hear it, I will now do it. That's hearken. It means more than just hearing. And so he's saying to hearken is better than the fat of rams, and the fat of rams means a sacrifice. It's the, it's the burnt offering. And he's saying to hearken is better than that. See, now... That's going to bring me to point number one. This is what happened. This can get you in trouble if you take stuff out of context in the Bible. In other words, if you, if you quote something to prove a point that you believe, uh, but it's not necessarily in line with the rest of the Bible, or even the rest of the chapter that you're quoting from. That's what we mean. If you're not familiar with the word context, we mean what... How does that fit into the bigger picture? What's going on around what you're saying? For example, if I were to say this, to obey is better than sacrifice. I could make a case to you on, on why it's better to count on your works to be saved. Just by taking those words, I could make a case for that. I could say to obey is better than sacrifice. Jesus, was he, he presented himself as sacrifice. To obey is better than that. I could take that out of context and completely twist it. You see what I'm saying? That's the danger when you take things out of context. I had a guy tell me one time. He said, "Well, the, you know, he's a guy that believes you can lose your salvation. Uh, he's a good, he's a good-hearted guy, good-natured guy. I mean, he's a decent fellow. But we were we were arguing one time. Not not really arguing. We were just we were disagreeing. I don't believe you can lose your salvation. He does. And he he quoted 
well, ye have fallen from grace. And that got me. I was like, that is in the Bible, I'm pretty sure. But then I looked it up. And he's quoting it out of context. Because when you look at the context, it's in Galatians, and it's in uh, chapter 5, I believe, and it says, if you're counting on, the, on keeping the commandments, if you're counting on the law to save your soul, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. I'm summarizing the first half of the verse. He didn't even quote the rest of the verse. The rest of the verse, then, then it says, ye have fallen from grace. It's not talking about people who, who get saved and go out here and, and just and, and get backslidden and start doing their own thing. It's not talking about those people at all. Yet that was what he was implying. <clears throat> he was quoting it out of context. And so when you look at a verse, you have to take it in context. Now, we live in a day where mainstream Christianity, I didn't say all, I just said mainstream Christianity, has completely abandoned any sort of teaching about works at all. Now, I will say this, they're right to abandon teaching works to save your soul. You're absolutely right to abandon that teaching. To, to, to teach that, to, that being a good person, obeying God will get you to heaven, uh, as far as keeping commandments and things like that, uh, abandon that teaching. Uh, to teach that keeping commandments and obeying God's commandments will keep you saved, go ahead and abandon that because that's not biblical. That's not biblical. You see why this is one of my favorite verses? Because it'll it's a curveball. I love this verse. It's a curveball. You you can get tripped up on this, but there's really nothing to trip you up if you just pay attention to the context. If you just pay attention to the rest of the chapter. If you just notice what's going on, that's why I only read the one verse. Because if you don't read the rest of it, you can get tripped up pretty good. It says, Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than, than, that, uh, uh, than the fat of rams. There's a major danger in our day of ignoring the context of Scripture. Amen. It is an incredible danger in our day. That's point number one that I want to bring out from this verse. It reminds me of that. Uh, there's, a, there's an incredible danger. I, I, <laughs> let me say this. <clears throat> when you look at a, at a verse, there can be multiple applications to it, but there's only one interpretation. Exactly. There's only one thing that it actually literally means. You, know, you can apply things from that, but you better not abandon that interpretation. You better not abandon the true context well of what it's saying. Right there, that's good. That's very important in our day. Tons, I, I'm not picking. I, I'm thankful for the preachers in my life that have pointed that out. Tons of preachers don't even know that. It thoroughly scares me. Mainstream Christianity doesn't even realize this. If I were to say the word context to, a, to, to most Christians, they wouldn't know what that word means. <clears throat> most, a, a, a ton of pastors wouldn't know what that word means. Uh, it just scares me a little. Now, some of them might know what the idea of that is. They may not know what it's called. So I'm trying to be fair. I'm simply saying it, it does scare me. It alarms me a little bit because a lot of preachers are taking things out of context. Uh, we have a health and wealth gospel in our day. Uh, it's out of context. It's completely out of context. In fact, there are people who believe if you get sick, then you must not be right with God. You must be doing something. See, that's really easy to get into. The disciples got into that. They said, hey, Jesus, uh, this, this person's lame. Which one of his parents sinned that caused this? And Jesus said, oh, no, 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 hold on. Neither. You're assuming. You're jumping to assumptions there, and you're wrong about this guy. Now, there was another time he healed a lame man, and then he said, now, if you get off in sin, it's going to be worse for you than it was before. Sometimes it is caused by sin. But it isn't every time. The, the, the wrong is assuming every time somebody gets sick, it must be because they've, they've got sin in their life that they're hiding, they're covering it up, and nobody knows it. That's a wrong assumption, and it's easy to get into. People get things out of context all the time. And that's a dangerous thing. It's, it, here's what I'm emphasizing. If you're going to quote a scripture, if you're going to get understand what you're actually looking at in that scripture, study it out. The easiest way to do that is read the verses before it, and read the verses after. Amen. And you'll figure out really quick, oh wait, this is not at all what I thought it was saying. 
and it'll keep you from error. Very important to stay away from error. <clears throat> now, the second thing I want to point out, this is another thing that's funny to me. Every act of obedience slash hearkening, every time you, the act of obedience is sacrifice of your self-will. For example, if the Lord were to call me to Africa to be a missionary, I would have to, and, and so I have a choice of either obeying or disobeying. To obey is a sacrifice. Because I all of a sudden have to give up my own plans. I hadn't planned on that. Uh, I all of a sudden have to possibly sacrifice financially to do that. I all of a sudden have to sacrifice uh, mentally and emotionally and physically, possibly, because there's all kinds of diseases that I'm probably about to run into. All of a sudden, obedience is sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? So you can draw a wrong conclusion here. You can say, okay, well, to obey isn't at all a sacrifice. Wrong. In fact, every time you obey, there's a sacrifice involved. Especially if yourself would rather do something else. Uh, Jesus said if a, if a man's going to be, be his disciple, he's got to take up his cross daily and follow him. What is What are you doing with a cross? You're sacrificing yourself. You're crucifying yourself daily. That's a living sacrifice. In Romans chapter 12, uh, 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 Paul told us to present our bodies a living sacrifice. So that's the second point I want to point out. I love this verse. Every obedience is a, is a sacrifice. It is. Again, that's not necessarily... We're, we're going to get to the main point of this verse in just a minute. Third thing I want to point out. <clears throat> obeying the message of the Bible. Obeying the overall message of the Bible. You know what that means? That means that you've got to accept Christ's sacrifice for your sins. That's the overall overwhelming message of the Bible. That's obeying the Bible. Uh, for salvation of your soul, it's accepting Christ's sacrifice. That's, that's the amazing thing about it. Uh, to, to, it there's, a, there's even an act of obedience in that to a degree. You're not earning your salvation. You're just going, you know what? God sent His Son to die on the cross for me. I'm gonna, I agree with Him. That's the only sacrifice that will matter. Any sacrifice that I do falls short. It's, and, and there's no way I can even perfect that. That was the perfect sacrifice. How in the world can I make any, any, any of that better? I mean, it was the sinless Son of God. How in the world can any sacrifice I make make that any better? Cain? Cain didn't get that. He's going, well, God refused my sacrifice. And he liked my brother Abel's sacrifice. But Abel brought an obedient sacrifice. He did what the Lord wanted him to do. He, he, he sacrificed an innocent lamb in his place. And so you have the obedient sacrifice there. Amen. Oh, it's wonderful. The, the Bible is, is, is very clear. We are saved by grace through faith and that not of yourself. Not of any obedient uh, uh, keeping of commandments or, or works, and not of works, lest any man should boast. And so, oh, it's, a, it's amazing. The, uh, believe it or not, God has told us, my son, receive him. Uh, Jesus Christ, receive him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Uh, look to Jesus for your salvation. And we either obey that or we don't. Amen. God would rather us obey that. See, so many people are trying to sacrifice and get, get to heaven on their own. And God says, oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I'd rather you obey what I told you. I've pointed you to Jesus. I'd rather you obey than come up with your own sacrifice. I'd rather you do what I told you. I'd rather you receive Jesus. Let Him, uh, let him come in, in your heart and save your soul. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. You, you obey on this. 
Jesus talked in Matthew chapter 7. It's one of the scariest chapters to me because he says many will stand before him one day and they will cry out, Lord, Lord. And he will tell them, depart from me. Ye that work iniquity, I, I never knew you. I don't know you. And these will be people who have been good people. You know, what we would call good. Even though the Bible says there's none good. No, no, not one. The Bible disagrees. But we would think they're good. They would convince us they're good people. If we were just looking at them. But they're depending on their works. They have not obeyed God. They haven't accepted. Hey, Saul of Tarsus was a very obedient uh, uh, man. He was... He was a very sacrificial man, but, but when God said, hey, he, he appeared to him and said, you need Jesus, all of a sudden Paul, Saul became Paul and got converted. And that, that act of obedience, you see that, of trusting Jesus Christ to obey is better than sacrifice. Now, this brings us to the main context of this verse. I believe that this mainly applies to after you're saved. After you're a child of God, after you're a Christian, okay? God would rather we obey His Word and His leading than just invent our own sacrifice. And that goes along with salvation. Uh, as far as a lost person, He would rather a lost person obey how to be saved than to try to come up with their own way. See, when you look at the context, what's going on in this chapter? Saul has disobeyed God. God told him to wipe out all of the animals, all of the livestock, kill everything, scorched earth policy, so to speak. Wipe out everything, don't, let, don't leave anything. And so uh, it says in verse 13, And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. In other words, he says, I have been obedient. And then Samuel said, Then what meaneth the bleeding of the sheep in mine ears? And the lowing of the oxen which I hear. So the context here is Saul has not been obedient. And he came up with his own ideas for sacrifice. And I, I believe we're looking at a Christian here. I believe we're looking at, we can, I, I, I personally believe King Saul was a saved man. And I believe that you can, as a Christian, you can get this idea that you're doing God a favor by coming up with your own sacrifice to Him. Rather than doing what He tells you. Rather than being obedient. I know that this is, this is a very deep verse. I love this verse. Because it applies in so many different ways. He says, And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Does He delight in that? Just And, and the context here is, He didn't ask for that, Saul. He didn't ask you for a bunch of burnt offerings and sacrifices. He asked you to obey. That's right. Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. That's the nugget of truth to be found in this verse. To obey is better than sacrifice. <clears throat> Take my kids, for example, and, and they love doing this kind of stuff. My kids love to do things for me. Keith loves to do things for me and Mom. And, and Kaylee loves to do... Theron loves to do things. Brennan loves to do... Thessalon loves to do things. At night, when we get, get home from somewhere, if we've been out uh, uh, in, in town or something like that, and we get home at night, it's dark, and uh, I pull up here and park, I would like to go out and close the gate by myself. I, would, I tell the kids... Stay up here. Before I know it, I'm down there at the gate. All five of them are there. And uh, with this, Dad, we're going to help you close the gate. Dad, don't worry. We're going to help you. We're going to be help, help, helpful to you, Dad. We present ourselves a living sacrifice to you. We are being sacrificial right now. Yes, but I would rather you obey. I told you to stay up there. There's all kinds of wackos out here. I, I don't really want you getting run over. I, a lot of times I take them with me. I, I like for them to be out there with me and help me, but there have been some times it's been like that. And, and I can go through 
um, example after example where usually it's in their best interest. The sacrifice winds up being in their best interest. It winds up being something that they've twisted to work out for them. And uh, they're telling me that they're being obedient. Or they're, they, they say, hey, I, I know I'm not being obedient, but I'm sacrificing to you. A lot of times we act just like that as Christians. We act just like that. We come up with our own ideas. There's nothing wrong with coming up with fresh ideas and things like that. The thing is, we need to check it with the Word of God. We need to. I've, I've had people tell me before um, that they've they've gotten a tattoo to honor God with. I've had people tell me that. This is mainstream Christianity now. You know, uh, I, I see it a lot. Okay, but what does the Bible say? What does it say? It says don't don't make any cuttings or, or markings in your flesh. It says don't do that. Now I understand that there's plenty of people that just don't know that. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. But I'm simply saying, I mean, I've had people come up and show, oh, check out my new cross tattoo. It's interesting, a lot of times they'll get markings or, or cuttings in their flesh for even people who have passed away. And, and I, I don't even, you know, there's a lot of times, oh, I don't, I, I'm not their judge. I'm not going to say anything. It's not my business to say anything. Do you know the Bible specifically says in that verse, don't make markings or cuttings in your flesh for the dead? <laughs> It says, even for the best reason you can think of, don't do that. What do people do? Oh, I'm going to get a tattoo so that I can show people how spiritual I am. I, I'm going to put a verse of Scripture on here so people can read it. When I'm I hear you and, you, and you've probably got good intentions. But to obey is better than sacrifice. Because if you really check... I think you're doing that more for you than for God. And you're probably doing that because that's kind of how you want it to be. Instead of, here's what God says. Uh, look at, look at the, the, the Christian music of our day. Uh, let me ask you a question. The Christian music is changing. It's, 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 it's changing rapidly. Honest question. Are, is it changing because we're, we're doing that to honor God? Are we doing that because God's Word is explicit? We should change the music to fit the whims of the world and things of that nature? Or do we just kind of like that music? And we're going, hey, we're going to make this sacrifice. Yeah, but the Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. It is. When it comes to serving the Lord, what we need to do is go, okay, I have an idea. I've had something laid on my heart. Nothing wrong with that so far. Check it with the Word of God. Amen. Check it with the Word of God. Go, to the, go. hey, you know what? Does the Word of the Lord have anything to say about it? Ask a pastor. Ask a preacher. Uh, you know, I mean, th there's even resources online. A lot of times I Google, what does the Bible say about such and such? There are people who think it's a good idea now in our day to come to church and socially drink together. I'm sorry, I, I believe that's absolutely, that's not new. The Corinthian church thought that was a good idea 2,000 years ago too. And Paul had something to say about that. But, oh, but we want to we be a sacrifice and we want to show that we love our neighbor and we don't want to, I get it. But to obey is better than sacrifice. Yes, sir. This applies in so many areas and what I'm simply trying to say Sometimes I get things laid on my heart. Sometimes, I'll, I'll tell you, whenever I first surrendered to preach and then I, I was wrestling, I, I started feeling the Lord, uh, I started feeling a call to pastor. And I went, you know what? What does the Bible say though? And so I, I started, I looked up 1 Timothy chapter 3 where it talks about uh, the, the qualifications for a bishop. I looked up Titus, uh, is, it, uh, is it chapter, it's chapter 1. And, I, and basically says the same thing. I asked pastors, what is the, you know, give me, give me what this is saying. Give me the, the core of what this is saying. Give me the interpretation. I started, okay, I've got something laid on my heart. Is it the will of the Lord? A lot of missionaries, I, I don't know who they are because I'm not, I'm, I'm not them. I, I wouldn't go around going, 
that missionary, that's that's one that did this. But sometimes I think some some missionaries go to the mission field. It wasn't the will of the Lord. I think they had good intentions. Paul had a door closed on him. He wanted to go to a certain area. I can't it, the the areas slip in my mind right now, but he wanted to go to a certain area. I think it was, uh, did he want to go to Asia? He was wanting to go to Asia. And God said, no. And sent him to Europe instead. It, now, he could have went, but, but I want to be a living sacrifice. And I'll go, my, I'll go do this for you, Lord. And the Lord would say, yeah, but that wasn't what I told you to do. To obey is better than sacrifice. See, what, it, what this verse is actually saying, to obey the Lord is better than your idea of sacrifice. To obey the Lord is better than you coming up with your own ideas of how to sacrifice. Because we're supposed to be a living sacrifice. That's obedience. <laughs> to obey the Lord is better than us just figuring out our own sacrifice and doing our own thing. When we do that, we are not being, we're, we're not denying self. Take up our cross daily and deny self. We're not doing that. We're going, you know what? I'm going to serve the Lord how I feel like it. Is that not what we're seeing in mainstream Christianity today? This verse applies in a huge way to our day. To obey is better than sacrifice to hearken than the fat of rams. The main thing I want you to to pull pull away from this. I want the Lord to lay things on people's hearts. I really do. I want Him to lay things on my heart. I, I I'll tell you, um, we had this revival scheduled at the beginning of October. That's normally when we have a revival, and I had Brother J.D. Weedo uh, already lined up to preach and. I knew he had mentioned that he did missions conferences, and I really hated that we had to miss our missions conference uh, this this year. And I, I don't know, I was praying about it, and I was like, Lord, what do you want to do? And I didn't have any peace about changing it. And then I, I, I still pray. And then the other morning, it just, I, all of a sudden, I just had peace. Let's do, let's do a missions conference instead. I didn't have peace about the revival. It was like, through my prayer, the Lord made it clear to me. Go ahead and make that change. I didn't feel right doing it without prayer, without seeking the Lord on that. There's... I'm telling you, in our day, we really need to stop and think about this verse. Because every, here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. When we get off doing our own thing, the devil will give us something that looks godly. He will. He's, he's absolutely not stupid to give us something that looks ungodly. He's not that dumb. He gives us something that uh, Paul told us we're not ignorant of his devices. He appears as an angel of light. That's right. He doesn't come at us like a, a, a red guy with horns and a pitchfork. Right. He comes at us and appears spiritual. I, I haven't ever read the Quran. But I've heard that, uh, that Muhammad saw a great light when whatever spirit it was told him the Quran. And people are like, that must be true. Whoa! Wait! What does the Bible say? Just because he saw a, a spirit in light doesn't make that true. I have people all the time, they'll tell me they, had a, they have a dream. They have a vision in their dream. And so that must be true. Hold on! Wait, let's compare it to Scripture. Let's see what the Lord said. Well, but it's calling me to do this, this certain thing, this sacrament. Well, that might be true, but does it clash with the Bible? Because to obey is better than sacrifice. I had a dream a while ago. I got a nap. It was wonderful. I got about an hour and a half nap a while ago. And so I had a dream, and uh, I was, uh, we were, for some reason, in combat with Nazis. Uh, a guy off the Indiana Jones, the really scary looking dude. And uh, we were fighting him, and I had all my kids. And so I was loading them up in the SUV and I'm under gunfire. 
And I was, and the only thing I was really scared of is if the kids get hurt, Johnny's gonna kill me. <laughs> that was my dream. And then, the gate. right. And then all of a sudden, I uh, we wound up being in an apartment building, and Kaylee opened the door and let the Nazis in, and wound up waking up. Okay, just because I had that dream doesn't make it real. And it, you know, I, I don't, I don't go. The Lord's calling me to go fight the Nazis. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Now, there's nothing wrong with fighting Nazis, other than they're already beaten, as far as all that goes. But I'm just saying that we can get carried away, and we can have good intentions. We really can. I think a lot of people have very good intentions. But I'm saying, in our day, I just wish Christians would stop and go, Hold on. Wait. What does the Word of God say? Because to obey is better than our random sacrifice. Something that we think up like King Saul did. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken, that's to hear and do, than the fat of rams. Oh, what a, it's a wonderful truth in this verse, and I hope we'll take, take it to heart tonight. I, I hope when you, when you are praying about something, when you're, when you're thinking about doing something to the Lord, Take it to Him in prayer. Seek His will in the Word and, and, and really try to find it. I'll tell you, I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was thinking, yeah, I, I even thought of this, does the Lord have a problem with me having a beard? I was wondering that. There's a lot of, a lot of preachers, clean shaven. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Johnny thinks I look like baby face Nelson. Uh, when, when I'm clean shaven, she's, she's like, you look like a little kid. And uh, she, she wants me to have a beard. But I got to thinking about it, and I'm thinking, Jesus had a beard. So that means everybody should have a beard. <laughs> the people who are clean-shaven are unscriptural. No, just, just, you see where we go a little too far with that sometimes? I'm just saying, we, we ought to find, you know what? What am I doing for the Lord? Is it scriptural? Is it, uh, is it fitting the scripture? Uh, you know, and sometimes, the, I understand that sometimes the Bible isn't just absolutely crystal clear on the thing, but sometimes it implies something. Sometimes there's an implication. Do you know the Bible, there's no verse in here where it says, Thou shalt not gamble. There's no verse that says that. But there's some implications in the Bible of how you're a good, you're supposed to be a steward of God's money. Everything you own belongs to Him. And so, you being a good manager of that kind of implies don't go risk it foolishly. Make wise choices with it. There's an implication. Don't gamble. You see what I'm saying? There, there is no verse that says don't look at pornography. You know there's some implications though. Jesus kind of said any man that looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery in his heart with her already. Oh! I think that includes pornography. But you won't find that word. Now, I think you will find the Greek word porneo, which is where we get that word. I'm simply, do you see what I'm saying? Did you know, there, I'm telling you, and this is not a lie, there was a group of men who were going to watch a ton of pornography to find out what was wrong with it. They were doing a study. In the name of God, they felt like God wanted them to do that. To obey is better than sacrifice. You understand? Amen. I know that's an extreme example, but that's what I'm saying. This is where that goes if you're not careful. If you get too far away from this Bible, you're not even going to know where you're at. We've got to obey the Lord. It's better than random sacrifice. Uh, Brother Bob, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you at this time. Everybody got a prayer